everyone and welcome to issues from twitter basically i see some tweets on twitter and then i just bring them here and just analyze them a bit and talk about them so today's tweet is going to be from someone uh, whose handle is victor israel and uh, he's known as Clor chlorpheniramine obedient so i hope i got that spelling right just like almost like chlorophenicol, but it's not chlorophenicol. And so he says this, he says, I'm doing everything within my power to make sure Tinubu doesn't win the 2023 election. Just for one reason. I do not want to miss Buhari. That reason. I don't want to miss Buhari. It's basically the reason why I'm actually doing this video. One of the things that a lot of people do not understand is that things can actually be worse than they are right now. Things can be worse to the extent that people will look back and say, Buhari was a competent and good president. Why do I say so and why do I know so? Because the same thing happened in 2015. Literally most Nigerians, there of course there are some few people who, who we, uh, See otherwise, most Nigerians, myself included, thought that 2015 was the lowest we could get. Things were bad. The economic wars have started. Dollar had started rising up within a very short moment. And that was the reason why APC used it as campaign. Even though a lot of people forget now, they say, oh, dollar was 200 or something there. Now it's 700. So imagine what it would be like when dollar is 3,000 naira. So they will not say Buhari was good, was competent because he was able to keep dollar at uh, 700 naira. Or maybe when a bag of rice is 100,000 naira, then they will not be able to say that, oh, Buhari was competent because a bag of rice during Buhari was 30 something thousand naira or 40,000 naira. That's it. So 2015, things were so bad. I were like, no, things can't be worse than that. And so the most important thing was to ensure that we didn't re reward the dead sitting president i'm like okay change him he's not doing well he's not listening to people he's not talking to people you talk about issues you know he doesn't even call he doesn't even bother to the extent that even the the minister uh, uh minister of finance was not the one that was pre presenting a budget to the national assembly because the president couldn't be bothered i think that was 2014 right but the, the president couldn't be bothered and all of that and uh so that was 2015 budget that was presented in 2014 he wouldn't even go to the national assembly people were talking like for example when they kept saying uh this person should be sacked what's his name um, abba moro during that uh, whole killings that whole saga of um uh, uh, Nigeria immigration, uh, employment, and all of that. So things, things were, things were unbelievable. I, I'm not here to. This video is not about talking about all the, the way the, the things were, but it's just how a lot of people seem to have forgotten. Because of course there were a lot of people who defended uh, the uh, the government there. Just as even with the suffering that we have today, there are still a lot of people who are defending the government. No matter how bad things are, you always find people who will defend the government. Because there are some people who, of course, they would have been benefiting, or they hope to benefit, or want, to, or they just simply like the people that are that are in government. So the cross of the matter was that in that 2015, honestly, we're like, Nigeria is so bad. I remember newspapers were being confiscated by soldiers. We're like, in a democracy, we never thought this can happen. Opposition uh, offices were being attacked, ransacked. DSS was doing all sorts of things, you know, or uh, uh, sitting governors were being prevented from flying. Uh, what, what do you call it now? Uh, so, some governors were being prevented from entering places or shun election, a KT election in 2014. People like Lai Mohammed were arrested for loitering and, you know, so all sorts of things were happening. The killings that were going on back to back to back, the insecurity and everything. And we thought, oh, no, there's no hard things can be worse than this. So whoever it is that you bring in, at least will be better. And that will send a message. And hopefully Nigerians will understand that they can always change whoever is in office. And if after four years, whoever is brought in doesn't do very well, you can change them. But guess what? Nigerians actually did the change and they went home to sleep. That was something that we must never allow to happen. We must never allow.
we must never allow that's why i keep, I keep hammering on the fact that we must hold if peter will be gets to win this election by the grace of God, when he wins this election by the grace of God, we must hold him accountable. We must let him understand that we are the ones that voted you, you know, we are the ones that can also take you out. There's something like, oh, you believe, yes. We are not saying he, he doesn't know what to do, but it's our job to keep reminding him what we want him to do. Let him put in extra effort and, and, and everything. So that thing where people thought that, oh, it can't be worse. So remember, what you're seeing right now, it can be worse. This Buhari you're seeing that has done so badly, it can be worse if we don't get in the right person. And so this is not an election for you to stay away. This is not an election for you to not be bothered. This is not an election for you to be praying. God has given us the capacity. That's why God gave us a thumbprint and a brain to be able to use, to make the right decision and be able to vote whatever it is that we need to, we need to vote in. This is not the time to sit and not do anything and say that, oh, God will fix Nigeria. God, want, God will fix Nigeria, but it is you that God has put here that will do the fixing because God has equipped you and I with everything that is needed to make a great nation. So please remember, it can be worse than what it is now. We can get to a place where dollar will be 3,000 naira. Uh, we can get to a place where bag of rice can be 100 or 150,000 naira. We can get to a place where they will enter your house and just kidnap you and that's it. And you can't even walk on the streets. We can get to a place where uh, uh, the terrorists and whatever will be the one controlling even our 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 cities and everything. They will even leave the villages and come to the federal capital and be strolling around. Anything is possible. So this election is not one for you to just sit by the corner and think that things cannot be worse. It can actually be worse. And if you do not come out to participate in the election, what will happen? You are then your vote. You 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 silently voted for the incumbent because when people do not come out to participate in the election, it is the incumbent that wins. The one that is already in party. So we must ensure that we are voting the right candidate into office. Just so you know, and don't say that you were not told. As I just saw that message, I just replied. I said, that your last sentence is the main thing that Nigerians should understand. That indeed, things can be worse than what we have. And then we'll begin to miss Buhari and say, hey, God forbid. Hey, how can that be a more better? Hey, like people will say, hey, hey. I don't even know what that means. And a lot of tribes do it too. My people also do it. They say, you're going to be a more better. May God forbid bad things. Yeah, yeah, man. Honestly. So, people, this is not the election of staying by the corner. People, this is not the election of just looking away. People, this is not the election of anyhow. This is the election of life and death. For us, oh, for citizens, it's life and death. Because we've seen, when there's bad governance, bad governance is what brings in security and what will cost people their lives. See what is already happening. The flooding in Nigeria, almost silence. Government, Buhari went to Onga, he was talking about the flo flooding in Pakistan. He didn't mention the flo flooding in Nigeria. Flooding has started already, That as of that time, from Jigawa. I have a video uh, here. I will look for that link and put it in the description. This I have a video that I did. I said, look at, that was like over, it over a month ago or something like that, about the flooding in Jigawa state. And I said, government wasn't doing anything. Hunger is already, starving. we're already in hunger. Starvation is telling us in that because most of the farmlands are underwater. The main places in Nigeria that are really the food basket of Nigeria, they are underwater. They are, the local jadem, as is the, the, the Jigawa state, the Anambra side, Anam and all of that, they are underwater. You see water up to roof and nothing. Let me tell you, this suffering, we think we are suffering. Let me tell you something. It can be worse. It can be worse to the extent that you will be missing Buhari. So stand up. Oh. We have days. Oh. We still have time. Oh. We have about four months. Oh. Slightly more than four months to get it right. God is not going to get this work, make it work for us. It is us that we use what God has given us to be able to make the right decision for us. Otherwise, those that we miss Buhari, they will plenty. <laughs>